So here the key keeper and I are today, and we're getting the Roach Palace ready for Halloween. And I usually have trick-or-treaters over here every year, but we also have more of our share of tricksters than we ought to as well. So what we've got up there and have had for a while now is a camera. Only the camera really doesn't have the, uh, have the field of view that I'd hoped for because it cuts out somewhere around the end of the sidewalk here and doesn't really see much to speak of of the yard. So every day I can see the mailman going by and stuff like that. But basically, yeah, to give you an idea here, got this television hooked up. That doesn't work very well, does it? But that's about what it sees right there. And so today, because the key keeper is not afraid of heights like I am, he's going to go up there and we're going to move that camera down so it's got a slightly different uh, range of view. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't do that. He's going to get that camera down from there. Hopefully he won't drop his drill on the ground. Look at that. Looks like a suspicious character on the camera to me. <laughs> it's very funny. Do I know how fast I was going back there? No, I see you. I haven't a clue. Well, now that camera's broken. <laughs> it was like a hair dryer. <laughs> Face. <laughs> it's very good. I've got it's you in my sight. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, you do, and it's a scary sight too. Uh, it's very scary. What do you want to say, guys? All right. Well, now, now we've got the. Um, the camera mount screwed into the house in about the location where we'd like to have it and it expands the uh, field of view quite a bit so we can actually see some of the street over there and now all the key keeper has to do now is put the camera back on its pedestal and we'll tune it up a little bit on the TV and see how it ends up looking the key keeper always pops up in some of the strangest places I should really charge you to do this. Yeah, you probably should. Especially if the house falls down from your pounding on it. Alrighty, so this, this is part two of getting the Roach Palace ready for Halloween. Every year when Halloween rolls around and the trick-or-treaters come out, I decorate the Roach Palace and sit outside and give candy to the neighborhood kids. Anyway, I enjoy doing that, but this year I've decided to maybe take it a little, uh, a little further than that and, you know, do some fun stuff, really have some fun with this. And one of the things I'm going to be doing is having some computerized lighting. Now, I've got the start of this set up with that ghost up there in the window. And when I say computerized lighting, specifically what I mean is this. This is an IBM PS2 Model 57 SLC with an option that you won't see on too many PS2s, a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. But that's not really important to us here. What we have here is the Active Home software from X10. Now X10 these days is mostly, um, well, a bit of a, for want of a better way to put it, a perverted company that's mainly focused on marketing. But it used to be that they actually devised the X10 home automation standard and they still do if you're willing to do business with them and they're kind of a sleazy outfit these days but they weren't when I bought this stuff anyway they sell control modules like these these are actually plugged into an appliance or a lamp these are for lamps and then they also sell a programmable controller that plugs into your computer and what you can do with this is you can set up devices around your house or wherever that respond to commands delivered by controllers such as the computer module or a remote control or something along those lines. With the computer module though you can also devise programmable steps known as macros and if this computer module sees a code come in that corresponds to a macro it can perform a whole bunch of options rapid fire one right after the other which would be the greatest thing ever for making a house look maybe a little bit on the haunted side. But here's a basic demonstration of the only module that I've really got so far and that's the light up ghost that you saw just a moment ago. As you'll be able to see I can turn the ghost on, I can turn the ghost off, and I can dim and brighten the light bulb in the ghost. So with a few of these modules spread around the house, a macro and a remote to trigger them, I can have a really fancy 
setup going while the trick-or-treaters are here. It's a little bright, but hopefully you'll be able to see the effect. Anyway, that's basically how the concept works, and I'll just be doing more of that when trick-or-treating night comes. <laughs>